Um, so next, let's talk about the, um, with regards to the mechanism of action of antipsychotics. Let's talk about the effects of the antipsychotics. And as we've mentioned previously, um, the dopamine receptor blockade. So blockade of the dopamine is the major effect that correlates with the, the benefits therapeutically of the older antipsychotic drugs. And there are a few dopaminergic drugs in the brain um, that we that we monitor or we that we assume that it acts there. Okay, so we have um, the mesocortical okay in the mesolimbic pathways. So these are for mentation and also mood. And then we have the nigrostriatal tract, um, which is for the extrapyramidal function. Extrapyramidal function. And then we have the um, tubero in fundibular pathways, which controls prolactin release. And then we have the chemoreceptor trigger zone, uh, which is for MSC so vomiting. And for the underlying antipsychotic effects, okay, mainly we presume that or we assume that it is the blockade, the D2 blockade here, okay, in the mesocortical and the mesolimbic effect, um, tracts is the main underlying um, cause for the antipsychotic effects. And the action on the chemoreceptor trigger zone So chemo, chemo receptor trigger zone is um, somewhere here, okay. So the action on the chemo receptor trigger zones leads to the anti MSS effects. And because of the blockade, okay, in the in the other dopaminergic tracts, okay, such as the nigrostriatal, okay, that that will end out the other and the tuberin fundibular tract, okay. So this will cause um, the unwanted unwanted effects of the of the antipsychotics. So this shows um, the receptors, okay, the main receptors, okay, and and the effects of the of the main drugs on the um, receptors. So these are the top, on the top ones are the typical or classical antipsychotics, And in the bottom one, we have the newer antipsychotics or the um, atypical antipsychotics. So, we, for example, we can see for dopamine two, it's like we have topramazine, haloperidol, pentaxol. Okay. Clozapine is a bit um, of a, which is a controversy. Some books will say that there is no effect on dopamine 2 and some other books will mention something like this. But otherwise, uh, most drugs will have a, an effect on the dopamine 2, okay? Some uh, like exert a, an effect greater than the others, okay? For example, we can see that for quetiapine, it's less of the dopamine 2. But then for the typical ones, it's like full blast, okay?
for the alpha, almost all also give um, exit the effects. Alpha one, blockage of the alpha one. So this is blockage of D2, D2 blockage of alpha one. For the, for the histaminergic one receptor, you can see that it's blockage of almost, again, of almost everything except for haloperidol, okay? Except for haloperidol. For the, for the, um, the muscarinic receptor block, okay. Um, Clozapine gives the highest um, muscarinic block, okay. But the others, um, quetiapine gives a little bit of block, lopromazin a little bit, but there is no block with regards to haloperidol, okay. There is no blocking with the aripirazole, aripiprazole, and also there is no blocking with ziprasidon. Okay, more important than that actually is the, yeah, I think this should be in this, uh, maybe this, this column, okay? Because it's much more, way more important than the, the other ones, even the D1, okay? So the ones that are very, very important are this, and this, and then only we talk about this, okay, talk about this, talk about this. So next is serotinergic, okay? For serotinergic effects, okay? Um, it has, it exerts its effects here and there, okay? In some books, it's mentioned that um, it has no effect on the um, haloperidol has no effect on the serotonergic 2A receptor. Okay, so this is a bit of a contention. Um, it can be debated. And based on the effects on these receptors, you can correlate with the effects on the um, adverse effects or the unwanted effects. So it can correlate. So you look at the EPS, okay, the more you have the effects on the dopamine too, of course, you'll have more um, possibility for getting EPS, extra pyramidal side effects. Okay, for sedation, for example, um, you can look at um, the ones that if has effects on the um, histaminergic, it's more likely to cause more sedation. Okay, so if no effect on the histaminergic, less likely to cause sedation. Okay. And then we can look at the hypotension. So blood pressure going down. So this one usually correlates with the um, alpha adrenergic receptor, okay? Alpha adrenergic receptor. So you can see clopromazine, yes, notorious for that. So haloperidol, yes. For pentaxol, this one you have to, we have to research further, okay? And then for clozapine, yes. Risperidone, yes, yes. Quetiapine a bit here, but then plus plus here. Okay, but sometimes, for example, for aripropazole, plus here, but minus here. But this is just one plus, so that's a bit understandable. And then ziprasidone here, two plus, and then there's only one plus here. Okay. Next, let's go to talk about the, the clinical use of um, schizo um, um, antipsychotics. So um, the main use 
is for treatment of schizophrenia. So it reduces the sum of the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, okay, including hyperactivity. So it reduces hyperactivity of a patient. Uh, it treats the bizarre ideation. Okay. The schizophrenics, they tend to have bizarre ideation. Okay. And then the hallucinations and delusions. And hopefully it will facilitate um, and help assist the patients in both their inpatient and outpatient environments, okay, in their in their functioning. So this is very important. We want them to function, okay whether it's in their daily living, activities of daily livings, uh, we call it ADL, activities of daily livings, okay? Like taking a bath, okay, brushing their teeth, okay? Going to work, okay? So those are many activities of daily living and also activities um, in involving social functioning and others. And the challenge with um, antipsychotics is it, it will take some few weeks, okay? Weeks, okay, for the effects to develop. Before we see beneficial effects, it may, might take some weeks. Overall, um, mostly the efficacy of the antipsychotics are quite comparable. They're quite equivalent um, in terms of management of the floridly psychotic form of the illness. Even though the individuals may respond um, best to a particular drug. Clozapine usually is um, reserved for patients with resistant schizophrenia, okay? Resistant to schiz resistant schizophrenia. Generally speaking, we we use old drugs and also new drugs, okay, depending on the budget. However, none of the older drugs has much effect on the negative symptoms. Okay, so for negative symptoms of schizophrenia, uh, usually we we rely on the newer drugs. Okay, so these these patients they have negative symptoms like emotional blunting. Okay. They, they, they appear emotionally blunt, okay? They have this face that um, they doesn't react um, accordingly with the with what they are, what is what is happening, okay, around them. For example, we are creating, we are supposed to create, suppose that we create a, a happy environment, a happy, a happy or a joke and something, and they, they are, instead of laughing, they are, they're just like having a stone faced or a, they are they are um, crying. So that's um, emotional blunting. Okay, so they are not much um, affected emotionally, or outwardly at least. And then also we try to treat their social withdrawals. So we want them to be more active socially and participate in the, in the society and also the um, motivation issues, okay? We want them to be more motivated to do many things in their life. So the, the next um, use is for other psychiatric and neurologic um, indications. So the newer ones are used, are often used with lithium for the treatment of mania. Okay, new ones, you want the psychotics plus lithium for management of acute mania. And two drugs at least, like um, aripiprazole, aripiprazole, 
and olanzapine. So these are approved for treatment of bipolar mood disorder, BMD. Um, of course, it's also used in other conditions um, like the psychotic symptoms of um, schizoaffective disorders. Okay. So patients with schizoaffective disorders, they tend to have uh, both manifestations of um, schizophrenia and also bipolar mood disorder. Okay, so it's kind of a mix. So there is an, a mood component there, affective, and also there's a psychosis component of schizophrenia. And um, these drugs can also be used um, to treat Gill's Dillard Tourette syndrome. To find out what the syndrome is. And sometimes can be used to manage toxic psychosis secondary to um, overdosage of central nervous system stimulants. Okay. So when you give, you give stimulants, as I mentioned, like if in the first series of lecture, um, stimulants can exacerbate, can worsen the, or can precipitate the psychotic symptoms. So we can give the antipsychotics to treat this. And sometimes um, the new antipsychotics also have been used to reduce the psychotic symptoms in patients with um, Alzheimer's disease and also Parkinson's disease, okay? Alzheimer's disease and Parkinsonism. So what else can we use the antipsychotics for? So we can use it for um, anti-emesis, okay, for vomiting. So they can become anti-emetics. Um, so there are, most can be used for, for anti, for anti, it's anti-emetic effects, except for thyroidism, thyroidism, can't use it. And there are drugs um, in this um, anti, that are antipsychotics, but they are mainly used for its antiemetic effects and rather than for antipsychotic effects. Huh? So that's prochlorperzin, okay? Prochlorperzin, so which is usually mainly used for its antiemetic effects. And some of these drugs, they have the, because of the H1 blockade, okay? Because of the blockade of the histamine one receptor, uh, it can be used for um, anti-pruritic effects. Okay, can be used for itch, and also can be used for to get its sedative effects. So next, let's talk about the. Um, toxicity related to the antipsychotics. First, we have the reversible neurologic effects. So this is usually a dose dependent. Uh, you will see dose dependent. Extra pyramidal effects. Okay. So we have, we can see a Parkinson-like syndrome. And this can be um, reversed, okay? We can reverse these effects by reducing the dose, reduce the dose, or we can sometimes give a, uh, an anti okay? An anti drug to oppose these effects.
and these actually occur more with um, most frequently with haloperidol okay haloperidol and also the more potent um, piperazine side chain phenothiazine such as the flufenazine and also trifluperazine So, haloperidol, flufanazine, okay, and then trifluoperazine. Trifluoperazine. So, these are all the drugs. So, yeah, you have to know it, but don't worry too much about it. So with drugs like um, clozapine, so this is quite rare with clozapine, and it's very much less common with the atypical or newer antipsychotics. Okay, so when we give newer antipsychotics and drugs like clozapine, also a new antipsychotic, so we can worry less with regards to the extracurricular symptoms. And also we might see effects like um, akathisia. These are in the older drugs. So the patient is, becomes restless. Okay, he's walking, sitting, walking, sitting, walking, and standing, sitting, standing, okay? And then we can also see dystonias, okay? With the, especially with the older drugs. Okay, you can, you can look up on, the, on YouTube for videos of acute dystonia. And these conditions uh, usually can be treated with, by giving, um, as mentioned previously, diphenhydramine. And also um, antimuscarinics. Okay, so this is one of the most, um, you could say, dreaded effects of the antipsychotics, especially the older ones. Okay. Um, so patients uh, with tardia physiokinesia, they develop choreoatetoid movements. Okay. So in the muscles of the lips, and buccal cavity. I think you can look for a video of Tadia Piscanesia on YouTube. Okay. Um, this is not something that we see um, frequently in, a, in our daily life, but uh, sometimes you can see it in the clinic, okay, a psychiatric clinic, outpatient department, you can see cases of Tadia Piscanesia. And unfortunately, this might be irreversible. Usually it becomes, uh, it develops after a few years, okay? A few years of giving antipsychotics. But sometimes can develop as early as after six months. Six months of therapy. So in this case, um, usually we, we, of course, we have the tendency to give um, antimuscarinics, okay? Because we think since that antimuscarinics can treat EPS, it's going to treat tardia viscanesia too, but no, that's not the case. And it tends to increase the severity of the symptoms of tardia viscanesia, okay? Instead of treating the tardia viscanesia is going to worsen, okay, worsen, make it worse, okay, it's going to worsen, okay, remember that, worsen, antimascarinics, they worsen the tardia viscanesia. 
So there is no effective treatment for tardive viscalicia, unfortunately. And usually when we switch to clozapine, um, it does not exacerbate, does not worsen the condition. Usually the, the symptoms of tardive viscalicia may be lessened, okay? temporarily by, by increasing the dosage of the antipsychotics or the, new, the neuroleptics. So some people say um, because of that, this might suggest that Tardive dyskinesia is, might be caused by dopamine receptor sensitization. Okay. So that's all for now. Later on, we'll talk about um, the other adverse effects of um, antipsychotics, okay, especially the autonomic effects, the endocrine and metabolic effects, the, and also, importantly, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, okay, and also other effects. Okay, that's all for now. See you people in the next video.